Welcome to another edition of the Daily Dizzle. It's Thursday, June 16th, 2011. Tommy Dizzle Mitz here, as always. Originally, today, we we're going to run through the rest of our uh, summer box office review so far. Uh, however, we're going to stay that for tomorrow. Um, we're going to do a preview of this upcoming weekend, uh, which should be very, very interesting. Uh, two movies that hopefully will do a lot better than they're tracking to with Mr. Popper's Penguins and the Green Lantern. We'll talk about those a little bit later. Uh... Instead, we've got a lot of news to cover today, uh, a lot of big, juicy stories coming out. Um, of course, the one thing I was most disappointed about not having the Daily Dizzle going, you know, I was disappointed not being able to cover the movies that came out as they were coming out and as they were bombing. But the other thing is, I missed out on like over a month of being able to make dick jokes because of Anthony Weiner. Uh, if you didn't hear about him, he's a New York uh, State Congress representative who, uh, <laughs> unfortunately... Uh, decided to take his last name to the next level. If your last name is Wiener or Butts or anything like that, don't ever have a picture of that part of your anatomy taken because it's going to end up fucking your career over. Or at least that's what Anthony Wiener has proved um, as he has officially stepped down. I am pissed off only because I really wish he had ignored everyone who was like, you need to step down, you're a distraction, blah, 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 blah. I guess you can't really ignore the president, though, but... I would have been one of those people who would have voted for him next time if he was up for re-election just for the fact that I knew he was entertaining. So, uh, unfortunately, though, uh, not many other people feel the same way. So it'll be sad to see him go. And, um, well, it's got to put a strain on him and Jon Stewart's friendship, right? Considering Jon Stewart, if he wasn't the one to hammer it home so much. I mean, he had other news outlets, of course. But uh, I wonder if that's going to make them uh, have some awkward... Uh, Hang out dinners next time they try and catch up. Uh, oh, so uh, so Anthony, what what happened since uh since uh you resigned because of the dick pictures? Oh, uh, you know, wife left me, and uh, you know, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go home and kill myself. Oh uh, really? Yeah, well, I still got a million dollar million dollar show on Comedy Central. I, I, that's got to be real bad in the next couple of years, but who knows? Maybe uh, Anthony Weiner, uh, now that he has a lot of free time, might end up popping up as a guest every so often, uh, a little more than he used to. Uh, but as we said, uh, this summer has been a little bit weird. Um, you've had some guaranteed franchises come out that haven't really hit the uh, success levels of previous entries. We're going to have the full details on that on tomorrow's update. But this weekend is looking especially weird. You have Green Lantern, a real unknown property around the world that Warner Brothers has decided to shell out almost $300 million just to make sure that the special effects look decent. And they're rushing to get those done for the last second for uh, the American release. That's why a lot of the rest of the world isn't going to be getting it until, like, August. Either that or it's because uh, Warner Brothers knows it sucks. But uh, reviews have just started to trickle out, and so far it's not really pretty, though. Uh, the movie's not aimed for the reviewers. It's aimed at little kids and to sell toys and to bring awareness to people who don't know it. And the best way to do that is to have lots of explosions and special effects, so... All the reviews so far, uh, last night it was under like 20% on RottenTomatoes.com already. Uh, but a lot of the reviews are saying, oh, there's not a lot of story, you know, it's more just action and loudness and, and colors, and even that it sucks and it's out of control. That's exactly what this current ADD generation of children looks for in movies. That's why Transformers 2, despite sucking a lot compared to the first one, and some people didn't really like the first one, but they at least give it credit for being decent, more decent than it had any right to be. The second one was just, you know, took all that goodwill and was like, let's just blow it up! So, at the very least, Green Lantern, uh, you know, the reviews are bad. Warner Brothers is trying to make it their next Harry Potter and Batman franchise, considering Harry Potter ends next year, and they'll have to go back and reboot Batman after Christopher Nolan finishes up his work on it. So, it's going to be a very, very uh, interesting experiment to see if Warner Brothers ends up even able to make a penny on Green Lantern. But, uh, next week, I will actually be checking it out, so I'll be able to give you know, first-hand reviews of, oh, all right, maybe the reviews were right, and maybe we don't need a Transformers movie that's green and without robots but with aliens instead. However, uh, the other movie coming out, Mr. Popper's Penguins, this weekend, seems to be, uh, Going with the uh, Jim Carrey formula that we've seen at work over the last decade of Jim Carrey plus weird predicament equals big comedy. What was the last one that came out? Jim Carrey can only say yes. And that was alright, but that was the least successful one. 
Uh, you have to go back to the to the real interesting Jim Carrey premises of there are more specific ones like what if Jim Carrey was God or Jim Carrey couldn't tell a lie or all those ones that you're like oh no that actually sounds entertaining. But I have to say the only thing better than just Jim Carrey being his zany self is penguins. So the two of them combined should probably be one of the biggest mind blowing awesome movies for kids, adults, all over. Um, I'm actually going to be checking out one of the first screenings of it in our area tomorrow uh, with my sister for her birthday. So uh, you know, maybe we'll uh, have some compare and contrast thoughts from the adults who saw it and how they liked it. Like, I, I don't qualify as an adult, but for the sake of this argument, I will be the adult. And then we'll go with the little kid uh, and see uh, if it hit all the right spots and if maybe... This will uh, get Jim Carrey back onto his uh, $100 million throne that Adam Sandler seemed to have uh, kicked him off. But uh, as we said, there's a lot of movies coming out. We're going to have some reviews for Mr. Popper's Penguins tomorrow night. Um, we might not have it during the first update for uh, for Daily Dizzle, but we're at least going to get a weekend update in there somewhere, get back into that habit as well. So at some point tomorrow, you will have exclusive uh, review of Mr. Popper's Penguins. Uh, next week, we'll have the Green Lantern review. In a couple weeks down the line, we'll have Transformers when that's out. But since we spent a little bit of time talking about all the superheroes today, before we go, let's run down a lot of huge superhero movie news and uh, other movie news as well. Uh, Expendables was successful last summer, made almost $300 million around the world, which almost instantly greenlit a sequel. Sylvester Stallone was director of the first one. He's going to be involved in the sequel, obviously, but he won't be directing it. However... They do have someone who knows action movies. Has anyone been watching, like, TNT over the last week when they've been showing Con Air a thousand times? They've probably been showing it because it was the same guy who directed The Mechanic, and that was a movie that just came out recently, too. They like to do that, even though if people won't connect the dots, you can just happen to tell. If a director has another movie coming out on DVD, you'll usually see something from him on one of the other channels, or at least one of the other main actors in his film. You'll see them popping up. It's just the, you know, uh, an interesting way of trying to tie it in and remind you, oh yeah, remember he was good in this? Well, maybe uh, this, this other movie will be good too. But you have uh, Simon West, the director of Con Air, uh, coming on for The Expendables too. Con Air was an awesome action movie. So, you know, there were a few weak things maybe in the first Expendables, but at the very least, if people don't like Sylvester Stallone as a director, you know you've got a good director coming in for this one, so it will be very, very legitimate. Um, on the Superman side of things... Um, how would you ever possibly replace Marlon Brando, um, as Jor-El, you know, Superman's alien father? How do you replace someone who has that kind of a larger-than-life, uh, full-of-himself attitude? You get Russell Crowe! Hi, my name's Russell Crowe! I'm not gonna be able to watch Superman without shouting that, so, uh, it, yeah, I hope, uh, someone else out there will be looking forward to opening night being that asshole somewhere else in the world because God knows I've already got reserve on it. Um, so it should be very, very interesting. I come on, Tugga! Um, other crazy superhero news. We're not going to get too much into it because one of the ones I'm looking forward to, obviously, like the rest of the world, is the sequel to The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Rises, which is going to be coming out next summer. Um... One of the games that uh, the media outlets try and play is leak some of the biggest spoilers that they can early on. Uh, you know, about two months into filming, which, you know, the movie has been getting worked on at this point. That's usually where a big juicy thing that's a huge game changer kind of, you know, shifts the focus. Everyone now knows a big detail of the movie that wasn't previously known. We're not going to say specifically what it is, but... There's been a lot of arguments since Batman Begins and The Dark Knight, you know, with all the people dying, and Two-Face died at the end of Dark Knight. And everyone's like, no, you gotta have him come back in the next one, you gotta have him come back. But a lot of people know that Christopher Nolan plays by the rules. He has not made these Batman movies ridiculous and over the top. He's actually grounded them, you know, and they seem fairly realistic for a movie about a dude running around in a cape. However, anyone who's talking, oh, you know, bring this, bring him back, oh, you know, bring Joker back. They're not bringing Joker back because Heath Ledger's dead, and they're not doing that. They're just going to let that character rest here. We did all the damage he could. However, doesn't mean they might have some kind of crazy, awesome explanation for, you know, people who died who might not really be dead. So, um, that'll give you enough, uh, fuel for the fire. You'll, you don't know who's coming back. You don't know that officially I'm coming back, but a lot of the news media is saying that the third movie is going to have a very, very familiar face come back into play. And holy shit, 
it's just going to be awesome. So, if you weren't excited for uh, being 400 days till the Dark Knight Rises, uh, I think it's actually under that at this point, which is awesome. So, be ready for the Dark Knight Rises. It's definitely going to pack a punch. Um, be sure to check back here tomorrow. We will have the rest of our catch up on the summer box office. We'll have exclusive review on Mr. Popper's Penguins, and we'll see what else we can round up as well. So, for today's daily Dizzle, I'm Tommy Dizzlemitz. Hopefully, we'll see you on Friday.